Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Joe, I, I, grew, I grew up doing this. We had eight mules on the farm, and my, and my twin brother and I, our primary job was to hair the tobacco land, and then after that, we used the mules to truck the tobacco from the field to the barn. And we'd done that for several years, and of course, we also had some one-row tractors at that time, but we got in the tail end on working the mules, and we thoroughly enjoyed that. And I wanted to, I wanted to bring that heritage back. I want to keep it alive, and so I got very well in, interested in horses about 25 years ago. I've always been interested in mules and horses, but I wanted to bring that heritage back. And I started going to the Amish country, and the more I went there, the, uh, it just, it just, I mean, you know, I just fell in love again. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best things, uh, you know, hobbies you could do. Uh, is, is work with horses. I, I really enjoy it. I, I, I do a lot of things with them. Uh, we do uh, some weddings, funerals, which I don't like, but I've done several funerals. Uh, I do some graduations, birthday parties, whatever they call me to do. I try to help them out in the community and, and so forth, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I go to a lot of field days where it's basically just the Teamsters and their horses that are here at, at an event. And they just, they have fun and they enjoy being together. But it seems like you make an effort to bring in the public as well. Why do you do that? Well, the reason why is because the majority of them, uh, Joe, are in our organization anyway, a majority of them, and they're members. And we have about, in the, in the Workhorse and Mule Association, we have somewhere around 400 members. And so it's quite a, quite a large operation, uh, and we really, uh, we really enjoy it. We used to have a lot more plow days than we do now, but we've had, so basically the reason why we don't have as many is because the people that were doing them have gotten so old until they've had to get rid of, shut of their horses. They're just not able to work them any longer. We have two or three of those fellows here today. They always join us, but they don't bring any horses due to the fact of their health. Yeah. Um, you've got, uh, on this land here, you've got you, turkeys and cattle, and what else do you do here? And we have a sow farm. Okay, all right. What was on this ground before you started plowing it? What's this stubble here? Uh, this was millet. Okay. We plant, we run, we run right sparta cattle, uh, Joe, and we plant millet in the summer so we can pump on it. We plant rye in the winter, and we pump on it as well. For our, we put our hog waste on it. Okay. And so it works out real well for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was business with the hogs and the turkeys and the cattle? Well, I started in 90, well actually I started when I was a young man with the hogs and I've had hogs uh, all my life primarily, basically, and they've been, uh, they've been very good to me as far as, as, as money was. Uh, and in 1992 I went on contract with uh, a major company here in the area and uh, we have really enjoyed uh, raising hogs for them and we also raised turkeys for the same company primarily. And so uh, and we've been in the turkey business approximately 40 years. Okay. And we've been in the hog business since 92. I'm talking about the inter for raising for the integrators. Yep, I understand. So you farrow and then someone else finishes them? So, well, we farrow, farrow and then they leave there, Joe, and go to what they call a nursery. And then they stay there for approximately five weeks and then they go to the finishing floors. So you just do the farrowing part, we, somebody else does the nursery part. And then part. we try to move them out at an average, at, at an average age of somewhere around uh, at 21, 18 to 20 days. If I survey all the good things that come to me from above, if I could count all the blessings in his storehouse of love, I surely ask for a favor and beyond mortal end. I want to go over heaven.
ain't covered. I'm gonna make up a verse now. If it ain't, if you don't like it, empty up a brick and chuck me. All right. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked me to sing it. Oh, it's a good song. change a little bit there. I wish I had. That took a lot of air. Yeah. Man, I'll do anything one time. You don't want Yeah. I'm going to get paid the same. Gosh, what I do. I'll sing anything y'all I hope everyone's having a good time today. I know I am. And uh, the Lord has blessed us. What a beautiful, beautiful day. I want to appreciate all the people that have helped me so diligently to put this on. I have a lot of people that are working behind the scenes and they have been working all week. And I really, really appreciate what they are doing. They help me every year, and I can depend on them. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Let's give all those folks behind the scene a hand and help prepare this. I'm going to play you one on the mountain, and then we're going to take a little break, yeah?
Here's one called a big strike hammer. Decided you wanted to get some walking exercise. Yeah, I decided I'd get a little bit of exercise today. Yeah, yeah. Do you like um, the walking plow more than I the do? Uh, I do. I think sometimes it just feels we're we're out here to have a good time. It just feels more and authentic, and also, yeah, I enjoy the walking plow. You can really feel the ground. Yeah, you can feel it. You feel like you're a lot more in touch with it. You really yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I enjoy that. Tell me about your horses. Uh, this is Helen on the left. Prince is on the right. Uh, Helen's mate, I lost him last January. And so she's still getting used to it. She's doing a good job, but she's always done mostly just carriage work and all. So she's a little kind of like, I don't, I don't like this hard work, but she's right. getting, she's coming around. Yep, yep. Well, furrow's okay. a hard thing to learn. Fur, furrow's a hard thing to learn. And that's the reason I put her in it. It gives her something to think about. I found that if you give a horse something to think about it, it, it worked better. So that's the reason I put her and she see she's coming along. Yeah, yeah, she came yeah. along quite a bit just just getting started this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, she's on. always slow getting yep. started moving.
right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, here comes Spot. What I've got here today are Australian Shepherds. The Aussie was uh, to, even though it's called an Australian Shepherd, it's an American breed. Everybody know that? How'd they get the name? The sheep that came into the western U.S. were imported from Australia. When you buy a band, a thousand head of sheep, a shepherd goes with those sheep. And the shepherds that came into the western U.S. brought little blue dogs with them to work sheep. So they were the Australian shepherds' dogs. Border Collies are uh, sort of the pinnacle as far as big field work. They're faster, they're quicker, uh, they really have a lot of precision instincts. Uh, I relate them to like a Corvette. Fast, quick, but you don't want to ride one around all in town all day. Aussies are a little bit more like a pickup truck. They'll do a lot of different things they're more likely to guard their own property, family, etc., and they've got an off switch. Send us a pretty day. Yeah. Say hallelujah. Yeah. You just spoke Hebrew. That means <laughs> praise the Lord in Hebrew. All right. I learned that when I was in fifth grade. What we doing? On the side of the mountain. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.